Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. I'm sweet, that's why they call me Deuce. Hey y'all, what's poppin'? It's your girl AD here, back at it again with another video. And we have a special guest with us today. Special guest, Emily. Yes! So we both did this show called Flag, Fight Like a Girl. <laughs> <laughs> and what people don't know is we did it together. What? Oh my gosh, are you shocked? <laughs> like we were all in the same experience together. You could probably tell by like some of the footage that you've seen and like, oh, it looks like the same place. Oh, that's the same place. So tell me, Emily, how was your experience on the show? Mm -hmm. It was exciting. It was something very new. And the best part about the whole thing was actually meeting you guys. Oh, stop. <laughs> we cry. We finished crying. We're going to go back there. But yeah, I agree 100%. It was definitely refreshing for me mentally. Mm -hmm. I needed it. I needed a break from the home environment. Yep. So learned a lot from you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We all come from different backgrounds. <laughs> That's true. I'm Latina. <laughs> I'm everything. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm mixing pot. Just mix it all together. And what do you get? You get everything. <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely an experience of a lifetime. So what were you mm -hmm. doing before the show? Trying to act in Atlanta. What were you doing before the show? Depressed. No. In my house. <laughs> upset that I didn't get surgery. You know, as y'all saw in my story. In my journey, but you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm alive. I'm not dead. Okay. Yeah, she didn't need the surgery to look at it. I'm all right. <laughs> you, know, you know, but I could have been a little bit more snickums and then a little thickums, but it's cool. <laughs> but yeah, um, what would you say was your favorite moment of the show? Being in the gym with Sean. Oh my God! Yes, and I love Coach Higgs. <laughs> Yo, Coach Higgs. He's the strength and conditioning coach, and he is literally like he's the bomb. dot com. His energy is great. Like all the coaches are great. Don't I'm not going to take away from them, but like his energy. He was like he was like one of us, kind of. I think like, it helped that he used to be a, a professional NFL football player. Yeah, and he just has the energy that we needed for to sure. get in shape. A hundred percent. And like he was correcting our form, so if we weren't doing it right, he was fixing us. He was like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. Like I would always do like the curl slow down. Like at first I was doing it wrong. He was like, poke your ass out a little bit more, and I was just like, I'm oh, trying I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm trying here. But um yeah, he was definitely like amazing. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say I think my favorite moment out of everything was probably going to the WWE Center in Connecticut. Yeah. Mm, that okay. was my favorite just because no one else has ever been no, there. No, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And it was like <laughs> legit, like this is the WWE headquarters. It was a dream. In Connecticut. First off, I don't like the cold, all right? So they brought my ass up north to be <laughs> frozen. It was freaking freezing. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was freezing, but that's because I'm a Florida local. But it was crazy. But yeah, I was frozen. I got frostbite and not literally. <laughs> but no, seeing like, you know, the Andre the Giant, Ric Flair statues. Like statues all were the, the best poster. part. Yeah. Yes. And the red carpet. Even the hotel. The the yeah. ho I mean, not the hotel, the, um, what's it called? The um, elevators and yes. the freaking thing had like WWE going on. I was like, oh TVs my. TVs and elevators. <laughs> like, can you tell I was friend girl like, a little bit? And then we went to Vince McMahon's gym. Mm hmm his personal mm -hmm. gym. And that's what you see on the show when we meet our superstars for the very first time. And, and he got like, shushed. We can't say by who. We just can say he got shushed by somebody in his <laughs> own place. Right? That was like, hilarious. that was literally He handled hilarious. it very well. You handled it very well. Did he? <laughs> so, what was going through your head? Like, you didn't know who you had at first. Mm -mm. She mm -hmm. actually thought she had my girl. I thought I had Naya just because yeah. of the plus size and, like, I have my online business for Plum Plus. It's mm. from, you know, plus size women. So, I was like, she's going to be mine. I model as a plus size model yeah or did before yeah. hopefully I won't now hopefully it's a skinny model <laughs> right <laughs> I thought I'd have Naya but I ended up getting Charlotte yeah. <laughs> I know they made you look like her they got the blonde hair out now she was dark I'm trying to get that. used to it I don't know we'll I know see. it's different you look good though yeah. She's like, she's like, uh, you look good. Take it. Okay, thank you. There you go. We got to learn to take our compliments. Yes, we do. Yes, because we're ladies. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh. Like, that was like crazy. But then I got 
The Rock's cousin. Everything right, like, happens for yes. a reason. Yep. She was literally like, she's so cool. Like how you see us like on the show, like that's literally like, she was mad. Same show. with Charlotte. She's just down to earth. Everybody's yeah. so amazing. Oh my God. Like you would yeah. think they'd be like, where's my Fenty Cappuccino Express latte? I mean, I would be that way. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. You would still be so chill, bro. But like they were literally like, mad cool like how you see them on total divas or how you see them you know when they're not their character because yeah. remember guys it's a character it's mm -hmm. acting okay they're not all like jackasses like they pretend to be but like they literally are like just like emily mm -hmm. and i they're normal yeah. people they have insecurities themselves like yeah. you know like it was crazy total divas was airing while we were filming and the episode that came on the night before my filming date with Naya from a reveal was Sneak actually snake. right was actually the episode where she talks about like you know feeling lost mm -hmm. like after like everything and I was just like yeah. oh my gosh like that's exactly how I felt like I resonated and I was like this is like you know, you're my first one right? exactly it makes so much sense <laughs> like like it was an actual issue for me. The only thing problem I say I would have like the whole experience is in the beginning like they didn't let me be like me as in like they didn't allow me to be my face they were like no lashes oh god oh my that god that was so hard like oh god not having makeup on is really hard so hard they literally when they first meet okay we were all in the hotel they first meet right they're like okay so remember we're gonna come x y and z oh no makeup i like that like i did that i was like <laughs> I gave up one of those. I was like, huh? Oh, oh, oh. I think we were the only two girls that they kept having to tell, like, take your makeup off. <laughs> take it off. We're like, okay, it's off. Right, or tone down. Or it's like, down. Less glam. They made me redo my submission. Did they make I me redo? Know. They made me redo my submission. Like, she literally told our producer, she said, um, hey, so you look like the after. You don't look like the before. So can you, like, toned down because I literally I had my lashes my makeup like I'm not gonna go on camera without like looking like I look myself like submission videos before we got there yeah I, like I went hiking and made sure I was sweating and I looked oh. like sh so oh, she's creative <laughs> with That's it very smart okay, had my smart. mountain in the background right mm -hmm. no they made me redo my jaw and I was like really <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me so let's see what happens but yeah so i redid it and i just no makeup hair was down i was a dark brunette dark brunette before i came on the show now i'm blonde like she looked at me she's like adriana like i was like yeah that's me she's like you're blonde i was like i know your lashes i was like i know next day can't have lashes Take them out. the only thing i did was my brows like that's it yeah. and i was like now I don't even do my brows because they're like, they're grown. So. They are. I'm good. <laughs> um, but how would you say, what was your negative? Mm, I don't know. I think I wanted to lose more weight, but like I had to focus on myself more than the other girls. So some of the other girls lost more weight, but they yeah. were, some of them were bigger than us mm -hmm. and some of them weren't here for weight loss. So I had mm -hmm. to learn to focus on myself and not compete or compare myself to other women yeah and I feel like if these women wouldn't have been here with us we wouldn't have learned as much as we did so I'm right. grateful for that so yeah sure. just just knowing that they lost more weight kind of got under my skin but if yeah. at the end of the day you can use that as fuel and make it push yourself harder yeah but you're just a naturally competitive person yes that's why <laughs> you love to compete like, <laughs> even when coach Hayes had us like going like going on one with each other like you were like trying yeah. to like beat people you weren't even trying to do the workout she was trying to compete i was like girl you need to be like on their roster the only so. person i didn't want to beat was melanie yeah i love melanie she melanie is literally like so sweet rest y'all hoes though like right? she's like she didn't care she's like oh it's on yeah. i'm trying to kill you like just because i know it pushes people harder when you have somebody to compete with yeah, that's Usually. what he said. That's what Coach mm -hmm. he said. He was oh, literally wow. like, "Look at us! Oh, like you're just quoting him." <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> oh, okay. Take it, please. She's team taken. I'm team not. You know, lonely girl. <laughs> Let's see if I'll be team lonely girl in April. <laughs> Probably because you know I have bad love luck so you're just claiming it you're manifesting it. no i don't i have great love luck i'm just setting my standards for the best that's what i'm doing the best of the best yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah no overall it was a really great experience it was so hard the last day saying bye and like mm -hmm. stephanie 
Oh, she's literally, she was there at the beginning and then now she was here and she's literally, Stephanie's so sweet. She's super sweet. It's like, oh my gosh, she gives these great hugs. She deserves to be where she is. Yes. And she uses where she is to help others. Yes, she does. And that's does. what everybody should do. I was like, I didn't want to let go. I yeah. started crying. I was like, I'm not a punk. I'm not a punk. I feel like she was trying to make me cry in the interview. I was like, she probably was. Yeah, because like I feel like they were all like production was like, oh, she's the broad who's gonna cry. Like, oh, we're gonna like since the beginning. Yeah. Like, what's it called? Tony and Jay in the beginning were literally like, oh, okay, so you don't have to do it like over the top, yeah. blah blah blah. And I was like, oh, I'm extra. So when I see you, I'm always gonna be extra. But I didn't think I was gonna cry. Mm -hmm. And then I cried, and I was like, I'm not gonna cry, I'm a punk. I'm not gonna <laughs> bring no punk, yo. And then, yeah, it just ended up happening. And then during the interview, she was like, tell me, tell me how it felt. And I was just like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> it ain't work. But then when we like did a group hug at mm -hmm. the end, like, then I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I started shutting. I'll be crying on the plane tomorrow. Oh, stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can't wait till this airs. Like, we literally have a piece of like our life and our journey, Huge. like going to be aired out, <sighs> which is amazing. Cause yeah. not many people can say they have the opportunity. I just want us to inspire other people. That's yeah, cool. for sure. Like, literally, if anybody, I'm an open book. So if anybody has like any reservations yeah. or any feelings be sure you can follow me at e-v-a-l-i-s-s-e-88 -S -S -E where can they find you the official emily cassidy spell it e-m-i-l-y-c-a-s-s-i-d-y -S 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 and you know how to spell the official <laughs> maybe they know <laughs> you know how their education get level. to school <laughs> stay in school kid Woo! <laughs> <laughs> i'm dead but yeah that's it for this video thank you for joining me thank you for having so me so fun oh my god before we leave you know but <laughs> I like that. You should do a little dust thing, a fairy dust. Mm. That's going to be your finisher. Coffee. And then I'll post it when it's time. Yeah, when it's actually Bam! Several months later. Many months later. So tell us, how are you? I'm great. I'm just living it up in Cali. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. It's probably warm over there right now. It's nice. I'm sitting outside on a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> I see. That looks so comfortable. Oh my gosh, I cannot. Thanks, babe. So, so what do you think about my episode? Uh, who's interviewing who here? <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, so your episode just recently aired within the past last week. And it's finally out. You're probably one of the um, few that I got to interview right as we were wrapping up filming. Now, looking that your episode is freshly out there, how are you feeling? Uh, when I first saw it, I was super nervous. And I had to, like, get some heebie-jeebies out, I guess. Yeah. What you call it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just... I. I was kind of torn between it and my current feelings, and I haven't processed it for about two weeks, honestly. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we interviewed you right after, right after, you know, you felt great, you know, I the did. whole process. You looked great. You still look great. No, oh, thanks, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> and just how did that whole journey, like, how did it make you feel? Man, the journey was great. Um, I enjoyed every bit of it. I loved working with everyone that we got to work with and meeting everybody that we got to meet. And the process of becoming who I am now compared to who I was before the show was indescribable. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. If anything, what would you change about the episode? I don't think I would change much. I just wish we all had more time to speak. I have so much that I hope I get to tell you in this interview that I wish could have been put into that show. Obviously, we all have our time limits on right. on Quibi and stuff. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot more that I want to say and help um, or hope to help other people with. Right. Um, I think your episode and my episode, if I'm not mistaken, were the longest. They were both seven minutes. Everybody else's mm -hmm. were six. So. Yeah. Still short amount of time, but what yeah. do you wish that the audience would have been able to see or what do you wish information would be out there for them to know? I just want them to know and, and really also for myself. It took me a little while to digest it all, but I just wanted to say that I never quit because I wanted to give up. 
I always quit because I put people before me. And I tried to save a few people, and I learned the hard way that that doesn't always work out. Yeah. I don't regret it at all. <laughs> but I do regret not chasing after my dreams sooner and letting fear run me. Like, fear of not being good enough, fear of, like, what my mom would ha- what would happen to my mom or what would happen to my grandmother if I left and started chasing dreams. I'm sure some people can relate to that. I fought that boys I fought the fear for 28 years and it took me that long just to get to Atlanta to pursue any of my dreams then it took me three more years to get to California after this show which was a big boost of my ego and my confidence to even get out here but I still haven't made it to LA because I'm still fighting that fear of not being wondering if I'm good enough wondering if I'm worthy enough but when I came here after the show thanks to the show I found out that I had a lot more to work on, even though I was there for, you know, a good bit of time, you have, it actually instills in you, like, the want to, the motivation to become better and better every single day, and that's what everybody should be doing, is working on themselves every single day, and right now is the perfect time to do that, so, after all of that, and what I really realized was this, yes, my dad did overdose, and it sucked, his dad committed suicide, my cousin did the same thing, but, with that being said, I'm a statistic. They say that if one of your parents dies in that way, in that manner, you're half as likely to do the same thing. So in general, I'm a statistic. I could label myself as that if I wanted to, or I could break past habits and break generational curses and become somebody different by making better choices. And I feel like a lot of people suffer with that and go through that and really just need to know that you can get out of it if you put yourself around people that want better for you, for themselves and learn to be motivated every day to become a better person and not to follow suit. Like one of the main things I heard when I was, before I left, before I had this uh, opportunity was my family, my own family saying, why can't you just settle down and be like everybody else that hurt so bad? But I knew deep down inside what I was supposed to do and what I meant to do is go chase my acting dreams. And because because I had the confidence to do that after WWE, I jumped. I came out here, and I didn't settle. And because of that, I've been on the Oprah Winfrey Network. I've been on WWE. I've been on Quibi. I'm growing. I'm SAG eligible. Like, things, things would have never happened if I wouldn't have jumped, if I would have let fear, like, run my life. So if you're thinking for any second to settle, don't go like chase it get on that boat because life is short as hell and like these generational curses yeah they suck and i'll say the last thing right here generational curses do suck but you can break them they can be broken i was blessed with a very happy soul a very giving heart and i won't let anybody take that away from me regardless of what i came from or how i grew up i've seen the worst of people i've lived through it but I'm here to make waves in a dead sea, and I'm going to continue to do that. That is my goal in life, to do everything that everybody else feared they could do, to do everything everybody else gave up on. And this show has helped me get to that point, and I want to encourage others to do the same thing. Don't settle. Well, that is beautifully That's my story. <laughs> put. That is definitely beautifully put. It reminds me of the quote um, by Babe Ruth. Never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game always that's very good it's definitely very relatable and well, i think we've come up with a new uh, wwe name for me though oh <laughs> <laughs> have we now <laughs> Baby Bruce. there you go but no i definitely think that as individuals we do tend to put so much weight on our shoulders and I feel like being a part of the show was definitely, you know, a reliever and an eye-awakening experience because you got to see yourself, you know, play out. Like, we knew, like, what happened and what transpired during (laughs) our filming, but we were super like, okay, so how is it going to be put? You know, like, that's a completely different story. How are they going to basically edit my narrative? months of work into 
seven to ten minutes. Yeah, and that's Six really wow, that's super hard to do, <laughs> and it's super nerve wracking. And that's why we were just like, oh my gosh, we can't wait till it comes out. We can't wait, and finally it's here. And it sucks that you felt that way, but I can tell you from an outsider looking in, it looked to me personally as a viewer you could sense the strength that you had you can sense that you were an overcomer you can sense that you wanted better and in order to get to a place of clarity and a healthy mindset the first step is seeking that help and that's exactly what you did you know mm -hmm. and as far as you being a statistic you already broke that statistic mm -hmm. you're not even a statistic speaking anymore because you want to be better in terms yeah. like you're out in california super proud of you babes and you know you may not be in la right now but you know you're getting there it's those steps mm -hmm. you know and something that i've learned that's literally been a pain in the butt has been patience and there's a right timing and God's yeah. timing his timing's perfect even That's though right. I'm the type of person I'm like I want things now 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 <laughs> and especially with this quarantine it definitely teaches you about timing because yes. we're kind of like in a standstill and in a pause at this moment which is very rare because not many people have gotten the opportunity to just pause on life and that's right. what we're doing it's a struggling and an unfortunate thing but it's kind of a blessing in disguise it is if you take it that way if you learn yeah. to use your time wisely yeah you know? for sure so oh my gosh i'm so proud of you thank you i just i hope that all of us girls take this little time that we've had to share with the world and use it as a platform to continue because we were picked for a reason you, you know that it was yeah. so divine like Divine Destiny, every single one of us were picked for a reason and we are meant to do so much for this world. We have so many viewers and watchers and listeners already. Let's just keep going. Right, for sure. So you had the wonderful Miss Charlotte. Okay. If she wakes up every morning, feels good about herself, works out, does something that makes her feel good, that will play a part in every aspect of her life. And I hope that I can just at least start that you know, one routine a day that helps her get on that path. Hey. Tell us about that. How was she? When I first met her, um, she's uh, a bit intimidating because she's just so, she's just beautiful, but you can just tell that she means business and she's serious. Right. Um, she's driven. That's why I love her. I think that's maybe one of the main reasons that she picked or they picked her for me is she's very driven and I'm very driven. I just, just keep going, keep going, you know, no matter what. Yeah. And she's just, man, she's amazing. Like, right. she could do anything. She could be anything she wanted. She's tried tons of things and has conquered everything that she's ever tried to do, like, surpassed it. And that's what I love about her. She just keeps going. She's like, all right, I'm going to try this. I'm going to succeed at this. All right, I'm done with this. Let's try something else. And now she's found what she loves, and she just kills it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. They ended up both, you kind of looked like her at the end. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, oh my gosh, they're sisters. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no. Do you guys I'm in still... California, I'm Alabama. I'm <laughs> well, you're in California right now, so what does that say? <laughs> there you go. True. <laughs> so, do, do you still keep in contact with Charlotte? I haven't spoken with her, I think, not since the, sh the show, like they left the last recording of the show. Aww. So, I haven't heard from her. Hopefully, she'll um give me a shout out for this <laughs> fingers <laughs> crossed she did retweet. Nice her. yeah she did retweet when the episode came out um did she? yeah she did she tweet, cool. retweeted it on twitter it's still on her page i saw and That's um, see i don't even get on twitter i'm so bad about it it's like i'm barely getting on instagram so i right. don't be better about these things i know social media it's just <laughs> it's just it's something thing. we have to learn to conquer oh for sure i feel like <laughs> You know, it's it can be a good tool in your toolbox if you yeah. use it that way. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. It just depends on how you use it. So Emily, tell us what is in store for you. Right now, um, I moved out to California right after the show to pursue acting as a full time thing. I have side jobs, marketing jobs, um, working in real estate marketing, but my main goal is to focus on the best reels that I can have and make in order to get the best agency that I can get 
to go on the best um, auditions that I can go on. Right now, um, you know, you have like your your stuff that you can do without an agent. Everything I've ever done was without an agent. And yeah. right now, it's kind of dead because of COVID. Yeah. Like, I'm hoping that it's hard. to take this time. Yeah. But like right now, just taking this time to study, um, study up on scripts, learning how to act professionally, um, how to work the camera, and then getting that reel out there so that I can go ahead and audition for all these parts that will come up after COVID. You know? Right. There you go. Putting it out into the atmosphere. I love it. Positivity. Definitely. And that's another thing I do every single day is, and I did it on the show, is make sure I'm doing my positive affirmations every single day because it makes a huge difference. Yes, it does. That's for sure. Yeah, it definitely does. I'm working on the fitness. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been keeping up? Yeah, boom. I don't play. Tennis every day. It's on the tennis, boxing, and then like I do some YouTube videos every now and then. Yes. Oh, yes. that sounds fun. <laughs> You gotta have fun with it, otherwise you're gonna get bored and then yeah, quit. That's the truth. I can sure relate. <laughs> I can understand that. So where can the beautiful people find you at social media wise? They can find me on Instagram at the official Emily Cassidy and I think Twitter is Emily Cassidy fifteen. Other than that, I got Facebook, Emily Cassidy Actress. Those are my three pages. I am starting a YouTube channel after this. Uh -huh. I will put all this stuff on there that you have, share it. And I want to uh, do a, an ending video of weight loss and workout progress and motivation to share with the world on YouTube as well. That'll come out like within the next two months. That's so, awesome. Stay tuned. Congrats. <laughs> well, Thanks, that was great. Thank you for spending time. Is there anything else you want to let the viewers know? No, I just said I love you and I miss you. And thank you for all that you do and your hard work and effort. Your goals is not going noticed. Oh, she's a the Lord. <laughs> and y'all know where to find me. I'm at Ivelisse88 everywhere on Instagram and Twitter is Ivelisse88. Make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. And, I mean, hit a follow. And let's remember to tell the people to continue to fight like a girl. Fight like a girl, baby. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mwah, besos.